Hi, I'm Kim Sanderson, and I'm the mother of two grown children, Ashley, who's hearing, and Cole, who's profoundly deaf. 25 years ago, my husband and I found ourselves at BC Children's Hospital, and our little baby boy had just been identified as being deaf. I had never met a deaf person. We knew nothing about it. We had a lot of questions, a lot of worries, and we had to make decisions really fast. You might find yourself in a similar situation right now. It would have been great to be able to sit down with some experts in the field. So what we're about to do is introduce you to a number of young, deaf and hard of hearing individuals. They come from different cultures, different backgrounds, use different modes of communications, and some have additional needs as well. But one thing that they all share in common is that they are experts in being raised deaf and hard of hearing and that they're delighted to share their stories with you. Hi, my name is Kelsey and I'm 24 years old and I have a mild to moderate and moderate to severe sensory neuro hearing loss. Hi, my name is Amar. I'm 19 and I'm deaf. Hi, we're the Leth family. My name is Curtis, which is my wife Monique, and our three-month-old baby Rachel. Monique and I both have a profound hearing loss, but Rachel is hearing. Hi, my name's Erin. I was born deaf. I have a 50-month-old daughter. Her name is Bridget, and she's hearing. And this is my sister. Hi, my name's Kristen. I was also born deaf. And I also have a cute son named Quinton, who's three and a half. Hi, my name is Felicia Lamato. I'm 25 years old and I identify as culturally deaf, but I also call myself hard of hearing. Hi, my name is Cole Sanderson. I grew up in Vancouver and I'm deaf. Hi, my name is Bowen. I'm 23 years old. I have a severely to profound hearing loss. Um, I was diagnosed when I was two years old and I actually had um, hearing aids for a couple of years before I had my cochlear implant on my left ear. Hi, I'm AJ Brown. I'm an artist and I'm deaf and I have cerebral palsy. Hi, I'm Jesse Kazemer and I'm 18 years old. I have a severe rising to moderate uh, conductive hearing loss due to bilateral uh, microtia and atresia. Hello, I am Ryan Olis. I'm deafblind with low vision. Hi, my name is Simran Burr. I'm 18 years old and I have a mild to moderate hearing loss. Hi, my name is Patrick. My last name is Caldecott. And I'm 25 years old. And I'm deaf. Hi, my name is Rosalyn Ho. I'm 25 years old. And I can be described as hard of hearing or as deaf. Well, I am who I am today because of how supportive my parents were and are. Um, they have never treated my hearing loss as something that is uh, negative. My parents have always encouraged me to be involved in a variety of sports and to try different things. That encouragement for me to be involved is definitely how I've become successful. My parents were absolutely my advocates from the moment I was born, from the moment my hearing loss was first diagnosed. They were looking for the best programs, the best ways to help me. They were immigrants from Hong Kong, so a totally new country, a new way of life. They were always asking questions, asking for new ways to help me and my mom spent a lot of time with me when I was small, teaching me how to read and write. So she would take me to the library, to the story time, and just sit there and 
walked me in her lap while we both listened to the story and then afterwards she would borrow the story book, take it home and read it to me again and again so that I could read and understand the story and just the language, the concept of storytelling and I think that's made a big part of who I am today. I think that parents need to know that they know their own child best. There'll be so many people telling you which direction to go. Do this, that's the wrong way, this is the right way. My parents have told us so many times their story about people telling them what to do and they had to make decisions for themselves and they hoped they'd made the right decisions for us and I applaud them. Thank you. You made the right decision. You know your child best. And just love your child. I have never heard my parents tell me that I can't. They've always supported me and told me that I could do whatever it is that I wanted to do. It's a great feeling, keeping that positive mindset. Anytime I felt like I couldn't, I would remember that confidence that they gave me that I was very capable to do whatever it is I wanted to do for my future. When I was born, my uh, papa, uh, it was one of his concerns that I would not be able to enjoy music. Uh, that was really big for him because he's he really enjoys you know listening to music and all that. And he was really worried that I wouldn't get that out of life, right? I started playing music when I was seven, I believe. I played a year of piano and then switched to violin, which has been my main instrument for 11 years now. Um, it's been, as I said, a huge part of my life. Honestly. It's always been part of my personality. I just love meeting new people. And the people I meet are always so diverse, people from completely different backgrounds, completely different cultures, and different personalities. I just love meeting new people. It's just part of me, who I am. Yeah, I'm involved in my community, the Indian community. It's called Punjabi. And that's a culture. It's where I'm from, my background, my family. And I get involved in that community. We share the same culture. We have different events and gatherings. Uh, I'll volunteer uh, during the summertime. And it's great to go with my family and mingle with everybody, yeah. I'm a team sport player. I love team sports. I also swam, but it wasn't my favorite sport. I got involved because I wanted to go to the Deaf Olympics. But my passion is water polo. I made it to the national level in water polo, and I'm pretty proud of that. I want to talk a bit about my experience growing up. I was so into sports. I was very involved in many different sports growing up. And there was one thing I felt that was missing was how to communicate on some of my sports teams. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, we came up with strategies during the games, and we figured out ways to communicate during the games. But if I could be on a team and use American Sign Language and sign? How cool would that be? And so I asked my parents about it and so they helped me establish the White Sox baseball team and I got together with a group of local deaf friends and we started playing and we had such a great time. The first year, you know, we lost pretty much all our games. A lot of my friends hadn't been involved in sports as much as I had growing up, but the second year we started winning more, and then the third year we actually came third in the White Rock League. Oh, it was great. We had such a good time. I've been passionate about a lot of things. I mean, the main thing I think for me is sports. Like, my whole life has evolved around sports and school, but I think another big part of my life is obviously my family. Like, they play a huge role in my everyday life, so I think that's a big thing. I play at Douglas College, um, the collegiate team, which is huge for me. But I don't really know many other, especially South Asian girls that play college basketball, so it's a good way to represent us, so that's a good thing. Even with my hearing loss, it doesn't change anything. I'm passionate about reading. I still am. I just love to read, always have. Reading for me is like my escape into different worlds and different ideas. I just find it so fun. I just love to read. A very big passion of mine is um, the arts. 
and I really enjoy painting. Um, this is one of my paintings in behind here. I have dreams of having an art studio and uh, painting and having a house with a studio in behind and having children and a husband, so uh, we'll see when that gets there. <laughs> I did have very supportive teachers, and um, I had a lot of help with uh, with uh, assistive listening devices such as my FM. And um, the student basically, I was just another kid. Going through school, I really enjoyed it. It was um, I was happy to go to school every day. I had very supportive teachers, and um, was very supported in my education with. Uh, the teachers and the hearing itinerant teachers as well. I was in the deaf education program and I had deaf classmates and we could communicate with each other really well. We could really get into things. We had mutual understanding. I could really feel what the other person was feeling and with different backgrounds and different cultures we could we could share all that with each other. It was also great to have deaf teachers that were signing all the material and I felt like I was on par with them and I had that connection. So in grade nine, I decided to move from my deaf school to the public high school. It was a lot closer, and they had a great volleyball program. So I made that decision to transfer over. It was an integrated class. I was the only deaf student in an uh, entire school of hearing people. And I made a bunch of hearing friends, and I happened to meet my girlfriend, actually. She's here today. Come on over. Well, I guess he came to my high school, and I'd never really met a deaf person before, and I thought, oh, cool, sign, it's a different language. And he had a good vibe about him. You could always tell Cole was a really positive person by his energy, and I thought, well, I want to learn some sign. So we set up ASL classes at our school, and I began learning more sign and communicating, and that's kind of how it all happened. I had the opportunity to go to Gallaudet University, and that experience changed my life because it was the first time I'd seen a lot of deaf and hard of hearing people that were just like me. I realized growing up alone in a mainstream school that I wasn't the only one. There were others just like me. Growing up with a hearing loss in school was, as far as I remember, completely a breeze. I never remember being teased or bullied or anything like that. I think mainly the reason for that was because I was always taught to be just totally comfortable with my hearing loss. It was just something that I was or something that I am. And I think because of that, me being comfortable with it, everybody else was comfortable with it too and there was never any issue. And I'm currently attending Simon Fraser University, which is where we are right now. Um, it's my first year here and I'm studying engineering and loving it. It's a lot of fun. I just finished my studies here at UBC with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and a Bachelor of Education in Secondary. I have a BA in English and Communication Studies from York University in Toronto. When I moved back home, I made the decision that I would do a master's degree, which I've just completed. I have a master's from Simon Fraser University, and it's a master's of education and curriculum development. What's next? Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm done school yet. I think there's still more to come. Looking forward to seeing what's next. Thankfully, because I grew up in a time of technology, I had access to closed captioning on TV. Um, I was able to engage in the social media and I was able to communicate with friends through text messages. There's a lot of technologies that I use throughout my life. Uh, I'll give you some examples. One is text messaging. I'll use that to communicate with other people if there's an emergency that comes up or something. Uh, also instant messaging with a lot of my hearing friends just over the c computer. We can message each other that way. Also at my home where I live, the doorbell has a flashing light, which is awesome. I can see whenever someone's at the door. There's also the fire alarm. Uh, there's a strobe light attached to that. And uh, for sleeping, I have an alarm clock. I don't 
hear an alarm clock, of course, so I have a vibration device that vibrates for me to get up, and it's great to have that technology. I use uh, hearing aids. I only have one hearing aid, so um, I use that on my left ear. I use closed captioning and subtitles for movies and TV shows. I use sign language interpreters when I can, and they have these uh, devices now for your hearing aid that plugs into your computer, and you can hear the sound directly to your hearing aid. I use two hearing aids, and um, I have used them my whole life since I was three. I also, in school, from uh, preschool till now, use an FM system, and that is basically a microphone that um, amplifies the teacher's voice and allows me to hear them clearly. At school I use hearing aids. I also have an FM system that the teachers wear, so I mean, wearing both helps a lot. I would say, really, the most important thing is just be totally open with it. Um, let him know exactly what it is he has, you know, just let him be comfortable with it. Encourage him to explain it to other people, I mean, as he grows up. Um, just let, let him know that it's, you know, it's normal and it's just a part of him, right? And it, it'll just become a part of life. With nurturing and love and a supportive environment, they will be successful. My advice for you parents who have a baby who is deaf Each child, you have as an individual, and each will be just fine. You need to create a positive vibe that you accept um, that your child has a hearing loss, because your child can feed off that uh, feeling from you if you have any negative feelings about um, your child having a hearing loss, which is understandable. But the most important thing is to enjoy um, every moment with his child. Let them be who they are. Encourage them to develop and succeed. Encourage them to get involved in different sports and to try different things. I would say, at the end of the day, just love your child. Don't focus on one thing about them, just focus on your child and letting them be a child. Not that they're a deaf child, but that they're just a child. Go out and enjoy each other, have fun, play, expose your child to different things, visit different places, show them new things, just have fun and enjoy it. They grow up so fast. You just want to take those opportunities and really cherish them and value what makes your child who they are. I've gone to several different Deaf International events. I've been to the Deaf Olympics and the World Championships, and I've met so many Deaf people who have been very successful in their own lives. I've met Deaf doctors, people with their PhD, lawyers, uh, business owners, millionaires even, so many different people, and I've been so impressed. Really, it's important to remember that a Deaf person can succeed they'll be fine, you know, as long as they have a positive attitude, they'll make it. The most important essential urgent thing is to establish some sort of language communication with their child, be it sign language, spoken language, braille, what have you. The most important thing is to set up some communication so that they can get start getting an overview concepts of the world and so that they can start to express their own ideas and then who knows where they can go, it's up to them. Yeah, kids shouldn't have limitations, you know, if their parents find out they're deaf. They're just like a hearing kid, they can do everything the same in the hearing world. It's also very empowering to see so many so many successful people out there who have hearing loss, it, it doesn't affect what you can do in this life.
I think it's really important to be able to communicate directly with your parents as a deaf child. Having no barrier to that communication, you'll actually be able to bond with your parents, in my opinion. I've always had that with my parents. I've felt connected with my parents. I've felt that mutual support with each other. It's extremely important to me. I think it's important to remember that um, while you may feel a sense of loss, your child doesn't feel a sense of loss. They will not be limited just by the fact that they come here, but only by their own imagination and by your, the parent, support of what they can and want to do. If I really believe that I can do something, then that would be my greatest disability. Because having a hearing loss is really excellent. I think you'll all agree, you've just met some deaf and hard of hearing experts. What strikes me the most when I look at those videos is that each of these young people have been raised quite differently. They use different modes of communication, have different family experiences, and have had different educational settings. But they've all arrived at a place that they're quite comfortable in and proud of. You know, 25 years ago, I did not think this was going to be my journey ahead. But looking back, I would not trade it for the world. And I mean it when I say it's going to be okay. In fact, it just could be quite amazing. <laughs>